We are getting ready to start conference play here in season number two with the NIU Huskies. And we've been off to a pretty good start this season with a win over number 19 Texas Tech to start the season and a win over SEC opponent Mississippi State last episode, which has led us to a three in one start to season number two here in our dynasty. And a lot of that success was due to our senior quarterback, Ethan Hampton, who was named the starter over Kenny Luth at the start of the season. And despite sometimes his up and down performances with interceptions and only four games, he's thrown for almost 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. Hopefully the redshirt seniors performance can continue for us here as we get ready to start conference play as we are on the road taking on the Kent State Golden Flashes. Jake Siebert had the ball lined up for the Huskies and his kick was off and we were underway here as this would go to the back of the end zone for a touchback and that would bring out Christian McRae and the Golden Flashes offense to start the game. Tommy Ulatowski the senior would be behind center for the Golden Flashes as his first pass of the day would be completed to Dash Dorsey and he would take this all the way to the end zone to open up the game for Kent State not the way we wanted to see this game open up for us. So down 7-0 early on here. Ethan Hampton in the offense would get their first look at the ball today. As that handoff to Jalen Poe would go for a loss. Then Kyle Thomas on the sweep to the left side. He would pick up the first down and more. Giving us a fresh set of downs now at the 40. It's going to be a play action. Ethan Hampton back to throw. Rolling out to his right. Not liking what he sees, he's going to take it himself down inside the 40-yard line of Kent State. Bringing the Huskies offense down to the 34 as he'd go back to throw again. Taking a shot to the end zone, that would be knocked incomplete. Not something we see from Ethan Hampton taking deep shots a lot is on 2nd and 10 with the pitch. That wasn't going for much as on 3rd and 8, Hampton's pass completed to Jake Applegate. But the Huskies would be a yard short of the first down, so Coach Brooks keeping the offense out on the field, wanting to go for and the pressure gets to Ethan Hampton almost immediately up the middle. The senior quarterback had absolutely nowhere to go on that one as his offensive line gave him no help and the ball would go back over to Kent State as on second and 10, it would be a handoff up the middle, setting up a third and six now for the Golden Flashes as the Huskies would have a chance to get their defense off the field and they would do just that. Andre Cobb coming up with the pass deflection for the Huskies to force a punt. Failing to score on our first drive, we would like to see some points, ideally a touchdown on this possession for our offense. As that run up the middle would get us a first down, but once again, Ethan Hampton met immediately in the backfield. Kent State has been doing a good job early on of getting pressure on our senior quarterback so far. As that handoff to Jalen Poe would set up now a third and 11, going with the halfback screen to Justin Lynch, younger brother of NIU legend Jordan Lynch, picking up the first down. So that play would give our offense some breathing room and a fresh set of downs as Jalen Poe getting the call again on first down. Picking up a gain of three on second and seven going right back to the senior halfback and he would pick up three again as Ethan Hampton now back to throw. Going to connect with Kevin Shaughnessy and the true freshman tight end would pick up the first down with that reception as Ethan Hampton would try to go right back to him. That pass would be knocked incomplete bringing up a second and ten. And again the Kent State's defensive line getting in the backfield causing disruption bringing up a third and 11 but Kenji Lewis would pick it up no problem bringing the ball down to the 11 yard line as we would end up losing some yards here on this sweep play second and 14 in the shotgun it would be a handoff to Jalen Poe he's not going to pick up very many there bringing us back now to a third and 10 Ethan Hampton's pass knocked incomplete intended for Kyle Thomas in the end zone so we would have to settle for three points here not exactly the outcome we wanted from that drive but I will take the points as we are only down by four now under a minute to go here in the first quarter second and 12 it would be a handoff up the middle and we would get Kent State back here to a third and six Olatowski back to throw that pass would be completed Kent State would pick up the first down as this drive would stay alive for them now our defensive line getting some pressure there in the backfield we've been doing a good job of holding them on the ground game today as we do that again Brown with the tackle in the backfield for the Huskies bringing up a third and 12 Olatowski 
Kotowski back to throw, scanning all day, and he's going to throw this one away, as that would bring us to the end of the first quarter. Kent State leads 7-3 over the Huskies. And after forcing a punt, we would get the ball to start the second quarter, as it would be a handoff to Jalen Poe. He would pick up four yards on that one, as we'd go right back to the senior back, who would get caught up on the offensive line. Bringing up now a third and four, Ethan Hampton in the shotgun, dropping back to throw, and he would find Kyle Thomas, but he would take a hard hit and wouldn't be able to hold on to it as Kent State would force the punt and take back over up 7-3 to three as it would be a handoff on their first play. Safety Trey Porter was all over that one though, dropping them back for a loss of one as it would be a halfback draw on second and 11. Once again, our defense was all over it, bringing up a third and 12. Olatowski back to throw. That would be knocked incomplete. Trey Porter again making a big time play for our defense as we'd force a fourth down and we would get the ball back facing a second and 13. Hampton hit as he throws. He would just barely get that one off in time as Kent State has been doing a great job of forcing pressure on him in the pocket today. But they wouldn't be able to get to him on that one as that would be completed to Jake Applegate for a first down. And we were slowly but methodically moving the ball down inside Kent State territory. It would be a fake sweep and a handoff up the middle to Poe. He would pick up the first down and keep this drive alive for us as Hampton would go back to throw. That's completed to Kevin Shaughnessy. The true freshman getting us inside the five yard line is on the sweep play. Kyle Thomas would be just short of the end zone. Bringing up now a second and goal from the two yard line. Kishan Pimpkin in motion. It would be a wide receiver pitch to him and he would take this into the end zone jumping over the cameraman to give us the lead. With our first touchdown on the board we would take the lead for the first time today over Kent State as they would take back over on offense. And the golden flashes would take back over on offense. Second and eight from their 18 yard line it would be a handoff to Curtis Douglas and our defense continued to be all over the sophomore running back in the backfield today as Oltowski back to throw that would be completed for a first keeping this drive alive now for the golden flashes fresh set of downs another handoff to Douglas and once again our defense was all over that as he has nowhere to run today bringing up now a third and ten just before the two minute warning Oltowski back to throw and that would be knocked incomplete so our defense would force the special team team's unit to come out for Kent State as they would get this punt off but there would be a flag on the play short punt here personal foul, personal foul. roughing the kicker, roughing the kicker. So that roughing the kicker penalty would give Kent State a new set of downs. First and 10 from around midfield. Olatowski back to throw. Jacob Finley is going to pick him off. And he would take this all the way back to the house for an NIU pick six. 47 yards and six points. I guess I will be okay with that roughing the kicker penalty as it would result in a defensive touchdown for us as Kent State takes back over. Just over a minute and a half here remaining in the second quarter as as Olatowski was looking to get his offense down the field to score before halftime here. The Golden Flashes would use their first timeout. A minute 26 left to go at the 45-yard line. That would be completed for a first down into Husky territory. Down to the 35-yard line, a minute and 15 counting. Olatowski back to throw, looking to dump it off. That's knocked incomplete. Great play by Jake Gassaway there for the Huskies to force the incompletion as Olatowski back to throw again. That's going to be incomplete. And the Huskies' defense coming up big this drive, forcing now a third and ten. Olatowski in the shotgun, dropping back the throw. He's looking. He has all day in the pocket as he's going to launch this one up deep to the left side, and that's going to be intercepted by Jacob Finley in the end zone. His second interception here in the second quarter, and the Huskies bring out the turnover chain once again. It'll be interesting to see if Coach Brooks stays aggressive and tries to get some more points here with about a minute to go, but we have seen that back fire on them multiple times this season already. So it looks like they will be conservative as they'll get the ball to start the second half and they are going to let the clock run out here in the first half as the Huskies would head to the locker room with a 10 point lead over Kent State here. Their defense dominating up front so far, only allowing three rushing yards in the first half. We'll see if their defense can keep it up in the second. We would have to wait for that though as Ethan Hampton in the offense would take over the ball to start the second half as as they would give it off to Jalen Poe. He would pick up a chunk of 13 to get this drive started as they would go back to the
the senior halfback here. Picking up six on that play, bringing up a second and four man in motion. Fake jet sweep to Poe again, who's going to be just short. Bringing up a third and one situation, and it would be a handoff. Justin Lynch has the first down in more as he's past the 50 to the 45. NIU getting inside Kent State territory on their opening second half drive as the run game has been working well for them and they've been sticking to it now going back to Jalen Poe again bringing up a third and three for the Huskies Hampton back to throw for the first time in the second half as that's completed Kenji Lewis just barely picking up the first down and they're gonna go right back to the passing game as play action Hampton rolling out to the right he connects with Kenji Lewis again the senior receiver picking up six for them and Poe back on the ground would pick up the first down for the Huskies as they're sticking with it here on first and ten coach Brooks really trying to hammer home that run game here to start the second half and wear down that Kent State defense as this drive has been going on for almost three minutes now Hampton taking a shot to the end zone knocked incomplete so Jake Siebert would come out for a field goal attempt but this one would be wide right and no good NIU has had trouble finding consistent kicking over the past two seasons here under coach Brooks and that seems to continue as they stay at a 10 point lead and Kent State takes over. Second and nine, Olatowski in the shotgun, dropping back to throw. That's going to be completed for a short pickup. NIU though with a chance to get their defense off the field here with a quick three and out. That pass would be completed for a first down. Dash Dorsey keeping the drive alive for the Golden Flashes as Olatowski back to throw again, going across the middle. That's completed. Dorsey again with the reception for Kent State and the Golden Flashes going with the hurry up offense here and it's going to be a handoff to Curtis Douglas. First run we've seen from Kent State here in the second half and the Huskies defense was already all over it as they're going to stuff Douglas again here. Only picking up two on that play bringing up a third and six is Olatowski in the offense looking over to the sideline for the play call back to throw that pass is going to be completed for a first down inside the 30 yard line of NIU as Kent State is moving it down on a promising looking drive here for them. Douglas would pick up five for Kent State on that run up the middle. Now Olatowski audibly at the line in the shotgun back to throw. That's going to be completed to his right side. Down to the 15 yard line as they continue the hurry up offense here in the shotgun. Douglas to the left. Olatowski on the read option. He's going to keep it himself not picking up very many. And he would take a huge hit from Kwan Davis. I'm sure coach wasn't too happy seeing his starting quarterback do that as Curtis Douglas takes it on this carry. Down to the 6 yard line bringing up 3rd and 1. Olatowski back to throw. He's going to connect with Jazzy Kimbrough for a touchdown. Kent State now only down by three to the Huskies. This game has suddenly got a lot closer here as that missed field goal seeming to haunt the Huskies. Instead of being up by six, they're only up by three now after that touchdown as it's going to be a sweep to Pipkin on the left side. He would only pick up one yard on that play as Hampton back to throw. Connects with Jake Applegate who's going to turn this short gain into a first down. And that would bring us to the end of the third quarter where we actually have ourselves a game headed into the fourth. Starting at our own 30 yard line, it would be a handoff to Jalen Poe, taking it right side, and he would be just short, bringing up a second in inches, and we'd go right back to the senior back who would pick up the first down. Ethan Hampton now dropping back from under center as he would connect with Kenji Lewis, who has this down inside Kent State territory, setting up a fresh set of downs from the 40 yard line inside Golden Flash's territory as Pipkin takes it on the pitch to the right side, and he picks up about five. Out of the pistol formation now, and it would be a handoff to Poe up the middle who has the first down and more to the 10 inside the 5 and into the end zone for a Huskies touchdown as he extends this lead and we are now back up to a 10 point lead over Kent State as Ulatowski in the Kent State offense takes back over as he connects with Douglas out of the backfield that would get Kent State down to the 45 yard line running the no huddle offense as we are under 5 minutes to go here in the 4th quarter and our defense has continued to be a solid brick wall against the run game so far against Kent State as Ulatowski's pass is incomplete. Now with a chance to get our defense off the field here on third and four. Ulatowski back to throw in the shotgun. He throws, hit as he throws, and that's going to be picked off by a Mariam Knighton of the NIU defense. Tommy Ulatowski's third interception of the day, and the crowd is not happy here at Kent State. Any points on this possession for the Huskies could put this game away for good as we were nearing the four minute mark here in the fourth quarter. As on second and four from under center Hampton back to throw and he would connect with Kyle Thomas they would be just short of the first down though so in pistol formation a handoff to Poe who's going to be stopped short so we would send our special teams unit out here
here, and this is something we haven't done very much, is punt, but there's a flag on the play. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. And this time it's Kent State who gets the roughing the kicker call, and hopefully that isn't going to turn into a pick six for them. As Coach Brooks elects to keep it on the ground, now second and six, Ethan Hampton rolling out to the right. That's going to be completed to his tight end, as the true freshman Shaughnessy gets us inside the 10 with first and goal to go. Now on second and goal from the five yard line, tight end to the right, man in motion. And it is going to be a fake sweep and a handoff to Poe, who fights his way into the end zone. And Jalen Poe tacks on another touchdown for the Huskies. And what was once only a three-point game was now a 17-point game as Ulatowski in the offense comes back out on the field. His first pass attempt would fall incomplete, bringing up second and ten as he dropped back to throw again, setting up the halfback screen to Curtis Douglas. That wouldn't go for a lot as that would be a third and nine now. Ulatowski back to throw. He's going to throw this one away. And so a fourth down stop here for the Huskies could win them the game, but Kent State would pick it up. A huge play for the Golden Flashes as they are just barely staying alive in this game, nearing the two-minute warning. Olatowski back to throw. He's going to dump that off, but they're going to need some bigger plays than only five yards at a time as Olatowski goes across the middle for a big gain. Inside NIU territory to the 37 as this pass game is starting to heat up for the Golden Flashes. It might be too little too late, though, as we are under two minutes to go here and they have yet to get any points on the board that that might change here as Kent State finds their way into the end zone for a touchdown and with this extra point here it would be back to only a 10 point game special teams unit would come out and here would be the onside kick and NIU would recover that no problem so all we would have to do here is run the clock out against Kent State's defense but they did have all three timeouts remaining so we would need to pick up a first down on this series as man in motion and it would be a shovel pitch to Kenji Lewis who's going to be just short of the first down. Jalen Poe would exit with an injury on that play but it would be nothing serious as Justin Lynch would sub in for him in the backfield. It would be a handoff to the senior back who's going to be stopped just short of the first down. In the Huskies with fourth and inches would keep the offense on the field. Hand off Justin Lynch and he's going to be met at the line and just short. Kent State's defense comes up with a big stop as Olatowski and the Kent State offense have a minute and a half to work with here. Three yard check down are not going to be what wins them this game though as Olatowski back to throw again he has a receiver wide open inside the 45. First and 10 now for Kent State as they were driving inside NIU territory Olatowski back to throw that would be dumped off to Curtis Douglas again only picking up three yards and that would not be enough here Kent State needed more Olatowski back to throw he's going to go left side almost intercepted a dangerous throw there from the senior quarterback that could have ended the game right there as he would drop back to throw on third down and that would be completed to Dash Dorsey across the middle. Keeping this drive alive for Kent State as back to throw across the middle again. That would be completed just short of the first down marker as Olatowski in the offense would hurry up to the line and spike it. Bringing up now a third and two from the 14 of NIU back to throw as Olatowski. He's looking to the end zone just short of the goal line as again they would hurry up to the line to spike the ball. Bringing up now a second and goal from the one yard line. Olatowski in the shotgun dropping back to throw. He has Hunter Hopperton wide open in the end zone. Kent State has brought this down to only a three-point game with 31 seconds left. They need this onside kick, but NIU is going to recover it no problem. As the offense would come out and Ethan Hampton would take a knee for the Huskies. And we would open up season two with a very close win over Kent State. A game that should not have been this close, but a win is a win. Thanks in part to a huge day on the ground from Jalen Poe. It was a little bit of a slower day than we normally see from Ethan Hampton as he only had 176 yards, one touchdown, but no interceptions today. And that was mainly in fact due to Coach Brooks relying heavily on the ground game today with Jalen Poe getting 30 carries and almost 150 yards and two touchdowns on the board for the Huskies in this victory. As a result, the senior halfback would be named MAC Offensive Player of the Week and his counterpart Jacob Finley would be named MAC Defensive Player of the Week for his two interception and one touchdown performance. We did have some bad news to follow that up though as we lost out on our first four-star recruit on our board four-star defensive tackle Percy Talbert did commit to Georgia Tech and this one possibly hurt even more as we lost 
out on the three-star gem tight end Orlando Gastineau to conference rival Toledo. I was really hoping on landing him and having him play alongside Kevin Shaughnessy, who's been a great addition to our offense so far. So it's really going to hurt that we lost out on this three-star gem to a conference rival. He wasn't the only one we lost to a conference rival as three-star right outside linebacker Tavares Madden would end up signing with the Western Michigan Broncos as well. But on the bright side, we were still in the lead for four-star halfback Juan Bronham over Navy and four-star right tackle Larry Gunderson as well as we had a slight lead over Kansas and Kansas State. Perhaps one of the most crucial recruits we needed on our board, Trent Butt, the three-star kicker, we still had a lead as it didn't look like we were going to lose out on him to Western Michigan. But unfortunately, we were at risk of losing another prospect to an in-conference rival as Patrick Adongo, the three-star quarterback we were going after, had changed his top school to Central Michigan, so we were hoping to win him back with his Week 9 visit. So with our first conference win out of the way, we were looking to pick up another one as we got ready to take on the Bulls of Buffalo next episode. And they were definitely going to be a tough opponent, even though they hadn't got off to the greatest of starts this season, sitting at 1-3 so far through their first four games. But as you know, any game on the road can be tough, so that is where we will pick it up next episode in our NIU Huskies Dynasty.